it is October 11th here in Winnipeg. We didn't get our pool fully closed before the snow just came in like mad. It's been going like crazy. Probably gonna get another half a foot yet. It's just wild. It's not cold enough to actually freeze the pool yet. And the snow won't stick around, but man, it is crazy out here. It's uh, been going for like a day and a bit, and like it's just kind of melting and then coming back, but just wild. Yeah, that's not weather for outdoor running. To the treadmill we go. Fred in the snow, can't even see his face. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can get... Uh going on this uh, before I get interrupted. I can hear people stumbling around upstairs. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so, um, hey there, Daddy here from Big Hoop Runner. Yeah, it's definitely been a challenging week for weather here in uh, in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Uh, it's been interesting. Anyway, um, Tuesday, uh, it was 20 Celsius or above, 70 Fahrenheit outside. We did a bunch of yard work, getting stuff cleaned up, and by Thursday it was snowing and snowing and snowing and snowing did that through friday into saturday parts of the province got three full days uh over two feet of snow lots of places um just wild and temperatures are hovering around freezing so it was really wet thick snow you had freezing thawing underneath um the snow cover so it was slippery it was super dangerous to drive around anywhere um and uh, winds picked up as well. So this, uh, all the trees still had leaves on them, essentially. Most of the trees still had leaves on them. They were picking up all the snow, and then the wind is picking up, knocking trees over like crazy. Power lines are out. Well, we were lucky here. We were only maybe out for half a dozen times, five minutes at a time at most. Um, but there were, yeah, mother-in-law was out for five and a half hours, six hours one day. Um, one of the cities here in Manitoba is basically out of power for over a day. It's... Uh, because the crews couldn't get out to fix the lines and stuff like that. So uh, it's pretty rough um, out there, yeah. The province has declared a state of emergency to help with cleanup, so does the city of Winnipeg. So it wasn't weather for running outside at all. Um, at one point, I actually thought about putting on the snowshoes and going out uh, just to get a walk in at least outside. But um, the snow was so wet and thick that even that wasn't a good idea because it was just, yeah, it'd be a heck of a leg workout, but just, uh, just too much too much and not really all that safe so yeah so the, the video the clips that I just showed probably uh, don't really highlight or show how bad it actually was because they're both in sheltered areas whether it's backyard or uh, out in the front yard but anyway so so that made it interesting for uh, running and stuff like that so but anyway um, so uh, back to the, the running stuff um, so as of recording this right now um, 13 weeks from right now, the 2020 Goofy Challenge, 2020, uh, Walt Disney World Marathon weekend will be done, be over. So not that much time left, but still lots of time, not that much time left for training, but, uh, we're getting closer. Uh, so I'm going to do a quick, this video is going to be basically focused on the last two weeks of training. So weeks four and five for me, cause I'm doing an 18 week program. Um, so yeah, um, I'm doing, yeah, so not last week, but the week before. So week four was a total 29 miles, five runs, longest one being 11 miles. I did that one outside, which was awesome because leading up to that, we'd had rain for days and days as well. So that's part of the other thing with this snow that's going on right now. It's like the ground is saturated wet, so it's... Yeah, I don't know. We're probably going to get some overland flooding here, too, out of this uh, snow as it starts to melt. It's weird. Uh, just a weird system. It's weeks earlier than we normally would expect snow here, if not a month. Um, and, yeah, it, it's going to melt, but then there's so much moisture, and the ground's already saturated. It's going to be it's gonna be messy out there. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I'm going to put in a couple of little clips from the uh, the running outside. I was doing some testing with the uh, Hero, GoPro Hero 7 Black. Uh, running. No, I had no gimbal or anything like that with me for this little run. I just wanted to see how light I could get on a run and still have a camera with me besides my phone. Um, 
And uh, so I just had a couple little handheld recordings with the uh, GoPro Hero 7 Black. Uh, so yeah, I'll put those clips in here. Right there. Now. Okay, so this is a little wider right here. I uh, just found a little off spot here out in some trees. You can see uh, fall is well underway here uh, in Winnipeg. Uh, yeah, a little cooler today too. Um, about eight or nine degrees Celsius. So not super, not super cold, not super warm, nowhere near freezing at least. It has gotten down near freezing a couple nights. Uh, so winter is on the way. Uh, which is actually not bad for me. I'm better running out in the cold than I am in the heat. My size, I need the coolness to uh, prevent overheating. Uh, but yeah, so uh, got, run's going good. Uh, nice outdoor run. Uh, this is fifth run of the week, uh, giving me all five of my training runs this week, which I can't remember the last time I managed to hit every single run of uh, my uh, training cycle in a week. It's, uh, it's been a rarity, unfortunately. But uh, this week is uh, this week is working, so that's good. Um, that's a nice change. Gives me some positive uh, positive vibes, some positive attitude for uh, for continuing on with the uh, goofy challenge training. Uh, ankle is doing good. My left ankle has been an issue for me for a few years now. Actually, it's been a recurring injury that I just cannot get past. But uh, back in the summer, I basically stopped doing pretty much any running. I had to basically cape completely off that foot as much as I could, and um, it uh, seems to have helped. The legs, the ankle seems to have recovered. I'm out doing uh, running again now, and I'm not having any issues with it besides regular soreness for any kind of running. Yeah, try that again. Had a whole mass of cyclists come whipping through there on me. But anyway, yeah, the uh, the right hip flexor has been causing a bit of an issue during this particular run. And it's mostly because uh, the treadmill running that I've been doing uh, will probably be a shorter stride than what I'm doing outside. So I'm stretching it a bit more than it normally uh, gets uh, stretched. So it's nothing that's a problem. It's just something I need to kind of stretch out and work through and uh, continue on. So yeah, I gotta get going. I got another four and a half miles to go. Okay, almost done this 11 miles. We've lost any uh, even hint of a blue sky at this point. Uh, wind has picked up. And uh, yeah, getting a little chilly. Uh, luckily tomorrow's supposed to get nicer and, and Tuesday, but uh, not today apparently. Anyway, I'm almost done this. And that makes for sure that I have done my five training runs this week. Woo! That's something to celebrate. And uh, looking forward to even doing more miles next week. Woo! Okay. And then, uh, okay, so then, um, week five, uh, so the rest of the runs of the week four were all on the treadmill, uh, and the, which was pretty good. Um, I did do pretty decent on those. Um, it was nice. It was, it was solid. I made it through the week. Uh, and then week five was another five runs again. And again, it totaled 29 miles, same as week four, but there was a little bit less mileage on the Wednesday run. So there are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday runs. So Tuesday and Thursday are short runs. Wednesday and Saturday are medium length runs. Friday is, or Sunday is the long run. Um, so, but they took a little bit of mile off the Wednesday run, one of the mediums, and it got added to make a 12 mile run as the maximum on the Sunday. So um, definitely challenged by the end of that 12 mile. So that's good because that's pushed me through to the end of that. It's you want a marathon plan to challenge you, but not break you. And it challenged me, and I don't think it broke me. We'll see. Um, so, yeah, so that that's good. Um, but, yeah, the, the weather this week was a bit of a was a bit of a fun thing. So, but anyway, yeah, so that's that was good. That was good progress. Uh, it felt solid. My left ankle that has been problematic is not giving me any issues, any problems. So that's fantastic. Um, no problems with any other parts of my legs or anything like that. To have one blister under one of my big toes, which was a weird location. I must have had a bunch up in my sock or something like that. So it feels like that one might even be a little bit bruised, but uh, should be able to work through that. No problems. 
Um, if I was getting us a couple blisters, I'm doing okay. So uh, that's doing good. Um, what else here? Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah, uh, so it's steady running progress. Hitting my plan, hitting all 10 runs in those two weeks. That's good. Combine that with a bit better diet in the last couple weeks, and I'm still working on that. But I think I'm down about five pounds thereabouts. It's hard to say with a guy my size, uh, one or two percent swing can look like a lot on the scale. But if I, you know, do the, the progression, it does look like I'm down about five pounds. So that's good. That's uh, going to keep that going. Um, got a long ways to go there, but solid improvement. I'll take that every day. Um, slow and steady progress. That's yeah, the way to go. So, yeah. Um, so what plan am I using? I've talked about the plan a couple times. What plan am I using? Now, I've used in the past... Uh, a few different plans, uh, jiggered out my own based on previous stuff I'd done just to make stuff fit, especially with races I've had in the f um, that have been coming up that I need to get stuck into certain spots in the training plans and things like that. But this time I've got no other um, scheduled uh, races or runs, and um, I just I went back to basics on an old plan that I'd used previously. That worked fantastic as long as I stuck with it. So uh, that's the that's the plan again. Um, so I did not use the Jeff Galloway the Run Disney plan, basically because that's a 28 week plan, and uh, the start of that 28 weeks I was still in the process of just resting my left ankle, just making it sure it's healing, that it was all good, that there was no uh, problems that I wasn't aggravating essentially. So that's, that was the plan there. Um, so that's why I couldn't use that 28 week plan. I didn't want to jump in the middle of it. So instead I went with the, uh, an 18 week plan that works, worked with the time frames I had and lines up really well. And I've used these 18 week plans before. So they're made by Hal Higdon. I'll give a link down in the description below, uh, of, um, uh, for Hal Higdon's plans. He's got multiple plans, all about 18 weeks for the marathon at different levels of runner, uh, where you fit and uh, your level of fitness and things like that. Uh, they, he also has a dopey challenge plan, which looks pretty good. I've never actually used it, but it looks pretty good. But he shifts around uh, his running a bit to make sure you get used to running four days in a row. I've had good success on using one of his standard plans that didn't have that shifting. Um, so take that as, as you will. It's, if you want to get that practice, I would use his dopey plan. Um, but, uh, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. So what did I pick? So he's got two levels of, of novice, two levels of intermediate and two levels of advanced. I'm not anywhere near the advanced levels, nowhere close. The, the differences between novice and intermediate are the number of runs per week. The novices give you about four runs per week, and the intermediate, in, intermediates give you five. And that extra, uh, from the novice side, um, you would take that extra fifth day and do cross training of some sort. So it's basically, if your legs aren't used to it, do something else um, to take a break from running, but still exercise kind of deal. Um, and then the differences between the novice one and the novice two, or the intermediate one and immediate intermediate two, is how quickly you get up to your maximum run and how many of the maximum runs. So Hal Higdon's maximum runs in his training plans are 20 miles, and you know an, uh, a novice one you might you'd get to 20 miles once, but with the intermediate two you might do two or three 20 milers by the time the end. So. I knew intermediate too, I was not going to be ready for fast enough. And that was going to be just a bridge too far for sure. So the, um, the next one down was intermediate one, which gives me two 20 milers, uh, before goofy challenge, which is very solid. I would be definitely in great shape and it's five runs a week. I haven't done five runs a week in quite a while. So could I do that or not? I don't know. That might be too big a challenge, but I felt I might have been letting myself down if I just went with the novice of four. 
So it was more of a shoot for the stars and hit the moon kind of deal. I'll try the intermediate one. And if I'm finding it too much, I can come back down to novice and be in a good spot. Um, and basically gotten a good head start as long as I don't hurt myself. So that, that's the trick. So again, like I said before, is part of a good plan is to challenge you. You want to be challenged because that's how you get better. Challenged. Um, and then you, you know, you expand your skills and you, you increase your cardiovascular uh, levels and all that kind of stuff and build your endurance. So you want that challenge, but you don't want it to get to the point where you just, I can't run again. I'm just too tired. You don't want it to burn you out too hard. So I was thinking after I got done the 12 mile run yesterday morning that maybe I'd done that. I'd bitten off too much and I'm like, okay, well maybe I got to back off to the novice two, you know, two, five day runs, two weeks in a row. And then that 12 mile or being a little too much, almost too much. Yeah, maybe I need to back off. But then I started looking at the plan and this is some of the brilliance of the plan is that the long run this upcoming week is only nine miles. It, it's a back off week. So Helligden knows he's challenged the runner in these two weeks to get up to this level. Now he's going to give you a little bit of a chance to recover, get your head back in the game, and go, oh, yeah, I can do this. And then he's going to push you again. Smart. It's good from a, an actual training perspective, but it's also good from the mental psychology perspective. Um, so, yeah. So as it is right now, the, I, there's no reason for me to back off this week because it's an easier week anyway. So there's no reason for me to go from intermediate down to novice. So good. Gives me another week in intermediate. And then I should be able to push through the next two weeks, that kind of thing. So gets me further and further which is awesome. It keeps me pushing and uh, keeps my brain in the game. So that's, that's awesome. So I definitely recommend these plans. 18 weeks for some people may seem like a shortened plan, but it, uh, it does kind of expect you. It, this is not, his plans are not couch to marathon type plans. He expects a little bit of a level of a running experience and training before you start. Now I'm out of shape, but I've got experience. I know what my body can do, so that gives me a bit of an edge. So that's why th that makes some sense instead of one of the couch to couch to marathon type plans. So, um, but yeah, so so far it's been going pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, yeah, so snow is melting. That's that's good too. That uh, should be coming down um, over the next few days. It's already a lot better on most of the major roads in the area. I think most of the highways in the province are open now. Um, so it's getting a little bit better, but back streets and uh, yeah, my, my driveway are awful. Uh, <laughs> but it's um, the stuff will melt and it'll be gone very soon. So hopefully uh, I'll be able to get some outdoor running out in, again because, I mean, the temperatures were not bad. Minus, you know, just right around freezing are actually pretty good. I mean, I've run at minus 40 outside. I've done a half marathon. Uh, outside in minus 40 weather and not a pleasant experience I've done it so freezing temperatures is not a problem I mean the temperatures we had this last week I've run at Disney uh, <laughs> at, at colder temperatures than that and uh, that's you might want, if uh, you're looking for run Disney history look back at the 2010 uh, Walt Disney World half marathon where it snowed that was not a pleasant weekend that was um that was actually my first goofy challenge where it snowed on the half marathon and was below freezing at the start of the full marathon. It's it's actually kind of stunning I ever went back and did another goofy challenge after that because that was my first goofy challenge and that was an atrocious experience sitting out in the uh, highway for two hours waiting for it, uh, the race to start in the snow. So that was not fun. But anyway, uh, it's the past. It's the past. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so I think that's, um, we're going to end it the video here so uh thanks for watching um throwing on a little bit of a snow clip uh but yeah thanks for watching and catch you in the next one mm -hmm.